Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another painting tutorial. As you can see I'm recording this at the time of the previous tutorial we did. We also recorded a tutorial on how to do those little lettering things that sits on top of the basis. Um, I hope you guys are going to enjoy this tutorial. Let's begin. The palette we're using for this tutorial is Celestra Grey, any white and any bright color. I'm using magenta. You also need the color of your base rim. I recommend black. The brush I'm using for this tutorial is a super thin one. This is my lettering brush. It's an old red grass game brush that has been thinned out and worn down. You can also try to find a liner brush if you don't have one of these type of brushes. The thinner, the better. And here I have my base. I have mounted it on this painting handle to make sure I have a steady way to hold it down. I also select where I'm going to do this name. The space that I've selected is good because it has an even height throughout the lettering space. I also take a piece of paper that I have done a preliminary sketch of the lettering on. This doesn't have to be perfect, but it allows you to get a sense for where you need to adjust the lettering and what looks fine at the moment. For example, the K here needs to be closer to the U. I now grab my base and my paper reference is right next to me. The first step is to map out the lettering using Celeste Gray. The reason I'm using this paint and not just white straight off the bat is because it's a base paint. So it covers better and it's easy to go back and forth revising the lettering between this and the black color that's also a base color. When you apply the lettering to the base, keep in mind that you want a little bit of distance at the top and a little bit of distance at the bottom. I keep the paint thin and fluid so it goes on the base easily. So as you can see, this is not the final product. I've just mapped it out and going to start revise the letters now. Now that I have blacked out certain parts, I go back in with Celestial Gray to paint in what needs to be done again. I'm trying to make sure the lines are as straight as I can make them and that the thickness of the lines makes sense. Don't hesitate to go back and forth between this more times as needed. You want to make sure that you're extremely happy with this before you move on to the next step. Now that I have refined it to the point where I feel happy with it, it's time to apply the white to the lettering. Make sure the white is nice and thin, we're going to trace on top of the Celestra Grey lettering. Now that the white lettering is done, it's time to apply the color on top of it. You can use any bright color you want here. I recommend a vibrant saturated colors for this nice type of glow effect. If you don't have an airbrush to do this, you can glaze the color in by applying thin layers of very translucent paint on top of the text a few times. However, the airbrush is definitely a time saver here. Whether it's airbrush or glazing, make sure you let the layer dry before you apply a second one so that you don't get uneven pooling. I have now made a band over the lettering from one side to the other, letting the magenta fade to the left and the right. This is the halo of the glow effect. Lastly, we're going to define the letters again by using the color that you've selected for the glow effect and mix it in with white. I'm applying this bright pink in the same fashion I did with the white by tracing it on top.
Now, you can stop right here, but if you're like me and like to take it that extra step, you can make a very bright mixture of your color and apply it to all of the tips and connection points of your lettering. Okay guys, that is how I paint the neon lettering on the side of the base. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I want to thank all of our patrons, Benjamin Winans, Carl Martin, Jason D. Fluffer, Jason Sellen, John Gammon, Jonathan Edlund, Joseph Larson, Mark Alexander, Mitzi, Matt Rutowski, Mike Elkins, Seamus, Stormcrutch, and Warhammer OK. If you want to contribute to these tutorials so that we can continue to improve them, follow the link below to our Patreon page. If you want to contribute by picking up some official Oscar Lars Painting Studio merchandise, follow the link to our shop where you will find dice, stickers, and eco-friendly screen printed shirts. We love hearing from you, so share with us what you liked about the content, what you're working on, and if you have any wishes for future tutorials. I'm trying to read and respond to everything, but if I miss your comment, it is very much unintentional. The wet palette and handle are from Redgrass Games. You can find a link to these products in my web store. Any purchase via these links, and Redgrass Games contributes a small percentage of its income from these products to these tutorial videos. You pay nothing extra, but you help to contribute to these videos so that we can continue to improve them. The link to my web shop can be found in the video description. The intro animation was done by Robbie Shillstone. The editing for this video was done by the amazing Martin Kramer. Thank you so much for watching, commenting, liking, and sharing this video. See you soon, and happy painting!